Okay, so this brings us then to our uh, last of the three topic domains, which is uh, computing. Mainly, the, uh, the biggest portion of this is going to be the Unified Computing System, the UCS, which is uh, mainly going to be managed by a web interface, which is the UCS Manager. This is where we're going to do things like define uh, service profiles, which say, like, uh, how many CPUs does my server need, what are the, the NIC cards, how much RAM is it allocated, uh, things like you would normally do through like your, your vSphere management in uh, VMware. But in this case, this is management for the, uh, the physical uh, chassis. Uh, the other big thing is going to be how do we integrate this with actually talking to the LAN and talking to the SAN. So uh, again, when we look at our, our design here, and previously we had our servers that were attached uh, separately with an Ethernet NIC card, that's going to the LAN, and then we had a fiber channel HBA, the, o, the host uh, bus adapter that was going to like your MDS switches. Now we have all of this collapsed uh, down further. Okay, in the case of UCS, the physical virtualization, in addition to the actual uh, like OS virtualization, like VMware or Zen, uh, there's multiple levels of virtualization we need to talk about. So not only do we have our servers that now exist on physical blades in the chassis, uh, which would correspond to like a VMware host machine, then inside of this we have our like VMware guest machine, that's our actual like Windows or Linux server. But then on the back plane of the UCS chassis, uh, we take basically the, uh, the LAN and the SAN ports, and these run transparently inside the chassis, basically as a converged uh, network adapter. And even if we didn't have VMware, we can present what used to be a physical converged network adapter on a physical server, a standalone server, and now we get to carve a single blade, a single piece of hardware, up with a single uh, converged network adapter, what was called a mezzanine card. It sits on the, uh, you know, just a raised platform on the actual blade, and now we get to carve up virtual NICs, virtual HBAs. So the idea of a server becomes completely abstracted from the traditional idea of a hardware blade or a hardware, uh, I should maybe say a hardware rack mount server, right. where the idea of a server is really now something called a service profile, and we create pools of MAC addresses, pools of worldwide port names for storage, for fiber channel. We create, uh, we assign those to virtual NICs, virtual HBAs, and we can carve up one physical server, not just with, uh, and, and certainly for VMware or OpenStack or whatever we might want to put on it, but even just uh, abstract that from a physical, if, if we were to do a bare metal install of an operating system, and allow, assuming that we can do something called boot from SAN, where the disk isn't actually physically uh, in the blade server, and it's not what's actually carrying the operating system, but assuming it's out on a fiber channel array and zoning is set up properly and everything else, we can actually move a server over to another blade because all they are is an abstraction. They're a service profile and they're just pointers, basically. Mm -hmm. So there's, a, there's really a lot that we can do in the UCS and that they can test you on in the scope of the exam. Right, right. Uh, so in, in addition to uh, what I was saying here with the, uh, the physical design of the chassis, we also have what is known as the UCS Fabric Interconnects. Basically, this is uh, where our physical wiring is then going to be split out. So from the UCS chassis, we have uplinks where these are going to be 10 uh, gig E ports that are going to uh, multiple different Fabric Interconnects. Uh, for the case of redundancy, so if one of them goes down or we have a link cut, we don't uh, have our servers cut off from the, uh, the rest of the network. And basically, these uh, two platforms are going to work hand in hand, where without the fabric interconnect, you literally cannot use the UCS chassis. It's just a dumb it's just a, it's just a dumb chassis. So th this is where the management is going to take place. Uh, this is where the, uh, the UCS manager, the UCSM, which is our web interface, this uh, box is what we're going to be talking to here, uh, the fabric interconnect then this is going to control things like uh, when I actually have my allocations of uh, servers, how do they relate from a virtualization point of view to the actual physical resources of the network? Because at the end of the day, we know that we have to physically put those bits on the wire, and they're going to be uh, dealt with by physical cables. It's not, you know, th there has to be some end to the virtualization somehow. So we can uh, get into to really detailed designs where maybe I have blade A and blade B, and I say that the traffic for blade A uh, must go this way to, to this direction of the network, and traffic from blade B can go this direction only, 
where this maybe is my primary and this is my secondary. So there's, uh, again, a, a lot of details in the design that you can get into uh, with this. So we need to understand first, what are the individual components? What's the overall design goal that we're trying to accomplish with this portion of uh, the data center? And then ultimately, within the scope of the lab, is, is to tie all of this uh, together. Uh, where this is also going to come in uh, with two other topics in computing, which is the, uh, the virtual Nexus switch, the 1000V, and then the, uh, the ACE uh, load balancer. Where the, uh, the Nexus 1000V is uh, going to run as a virtual machine. So on your, uh, your UCS chassis or on just your regular like bare metal server, like a 1U Dell server, uh, you can take this, uh, basically what is a VMware, guest, so it's an NVMware machine, uh, and this is a logical representation then of what would normally be like your physical Nexus 5K or your physical uh, Nexus 7K. Yeah, it looks like a, a CAT 6500 or a 7000 where I have uh, a supervisor module and then multiple blades. Mm -hmm. So the supervisor module is this VMware guest or pair of VMware guests for redundancy. We always like redundant supervisors. And then the blades are something that we install into each ESX host, and they basically replace the vSwitch or distributed vSwitch. Right. And so it just looks like one chassis of a switch talking to the Nexus 2K or the Nexus 5K or wherever we have these interconnects. Mm -hmm. Because figure, when, when we're dealing with the virtualization, one of the big challenges is how do we actually manage the network? Because the management previously when everything was physical was much simpler because I have a physical one use server that has a physical link to a physical switch. I configure the switch, I configure the server, end of story. What if I wanted to span a certain port? Or what if yeah. I wanted to insert a firewall? Right. It's very difficult to do that with all the virtualization. Right. The Nexus 1000 gives us that visibility again. Now I can span ports. I can uh, remote span ports. I can plug an ACL in or uh, you know, guaranteed QoS or I can have even a yeah. security, a virtual security appliance. Right. So even though it runs in software on the, uh, the actual chassis, it looks like a physical switch from our point of view from management where we would have like Ethernet ports that are access ports that we would assign the access VLAN for the server or we would assign, like Mark said, the QoS policy. And we SSH into it just like a normal Nexus right. switch. It looks right. like a Nexus switch. Right. It's just VMware. Instead of addressing it through the VMware version of vSwitch, uh, then this brings us to uh, the last portion of computing, which is the ACE uh, load balancer, which ACE is basically an application uh, level switch. If you're familiar with like F5 LTM, same exact thing, where the idea is that uh, well, we have, maybe well, maybe exactly. not the same exact thing. ACE, but F5 actually gets used. No, F5 doesn't get used. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry to any system people. Uh, so the, um, the, basically the goal of the ACE module is this is where like my public IP would live. So let's say I have a web server and my users are coming in from the internet, they need to talk to the web server. They're going to talk first, so they come in from IP. Okay, they come to the Nexus 7K, this is our layer 3 boundary. Okay, our division down here is going to be layer 2. Uh, so we now get down onto the layer 2 LAN. The Nexus then needs to know what's the MAC address of the server. So we know from traditional layer 2, layer 3 networking, we look at our resolution of the IP address to the MAC address with our address resolution protocol. That's who we're going to forward the frame to. Now normally, since this is a layer 2 LAN, the forwarding of the MAC address is going to go down here into the chassis, down to whatever the virtual MAC address is, like assigned to the virtual NIC of the, of the server. But the problem then becomes is this chassis is so powerful we don't want to run one web server. I want to run 100 instances of my web server where I may have just one physical blade, but I'm running tons of virtual machines because a lot of times your one physical bare metal box can't take all of the resources of the physical machine anymore. Because not only, we're, we're not running into limitations of like CPU utilization or memory utilization anymore, we're running into the application level problems where Apache can't address that much memory or Apache can't spawn that many instances. So in, in a lot of cases we run into or it's the design would better be solved to run multiple logical instances of the application and then use something at the front of it 
to mask this from the end users. And that's basically what the main goal, and obviously it has other features, but that's what the main goal of the ACE module is, that when the packets come in, they're gonna go to basically the virtual address that the ACE is defining. Then ACE is gonna do things like uh, pull the individual servers to figure out what's the, you know, are, is the server alive? So like if Apache crashes, but I'm able to ping the IP address, I wanna know that. So doing basic layer three checking is not good enough anymore from, an, from a, a high availability point of view. So instead what I'm gonna do is maybe send an HTTP GET and figure out did I actually get the web page response back in. If I don't get the response, I'm gonna take that server out of the virtual pool. So they're no longer able to forward traffic uh, for that uh, particular server pool that I've defined. So in the, in the larger scope of things, th this is gonna be a much smaller portion of the exam. And Cisco did also note that they're not going to have their global load balancer as well. Mm -hmm. So we just had, you know, the, the site select, the GSS, global site the selector, global right. site selector, they are just going to have the ACE uh, load balancer for a single site. So we don't have to worry about doing the global site selector between data centers. In fact, I would imagine if they're going to have us do other data centers, which they probably would with OTV, right. they may or may not, but I don't think they'll have you do have actual servers over there that we're going to be doing vMotion or things like that. This isn't a VMware exam. It's right. not, you know, it's not, a, so anyhow. So it, it definitely fits into the, uh, to the overall design here. And as you can see, I mean, only spending this 45 minutes, hour or so that we talked about it so far, the, the scope is very, very large for these topics. So uh, this brings us to then um, how are we actually going to split this up and how are we actually going to deliver uh, this in, in the, uh, the scope of training. Uh, specifically, we're going to have four different delivery methods for uh, the data center training. Okay, first and foremost is going to be the live classes. So there's going to be online classes. There's also going to be live uh, on-site classes. Next is going to be the, uh, the video series, both in streaming formats and in download formats, similar to the other content uh, that we have up to this point. Uh, another important feature of this is that it uh, has cross-platform uh, support and it's DRM-free. So you, you download the video, put it on your iPad, put it on your Android phone, put it on your Windows phone, that's up to you. Okay, we wanna make sure that, that you as the, uh, the learner, you as the engineer, have flexible access to this content to use it w whenever, however you want, that's up to you. Yeah, we, we ask you not to share it, but you know, right. the, the truth <laughs> is, is that DRM just it becomes prohibited. Yes. It, it, it yeah. becomes prohibitive to the, the valid person that paid for it and, and wants to End learn, up so. punishing the paying customer. Exactly, exactly. and we yeah. don't like to do that. Um, so the, uh, so the, all the material will be available in the, um, e either the streaming format or uh, download format. Uh, we will also have self-paced uh, lab material, like workbook type uh, labs, and then also uh, rack rentals. Okay, the last one is gonna be uh, kind of tricky because as you guys know, this hardware is basically the cutting edge hardware that's out there right now, where we're talking about 100 gig E line cards that are literally millions of dollars. Uh, so uh, we're going to have to come up with some uh, creative solutions. We're going to talk about this uh, in a little bit uh, more detail uh, shortly. But we will have availability for equipment. You will be able to come in and get access to Nexus 7K, Nexus 5K, 2K, UCS, Nexus 1000V. So basically all the platforms that are within the scope of the exam, we will be, ac we will be offering access uh, to those platforms to, uh, to you guys, the customers. And there may be others that we're unaware of, but we haven't found anyone else that's offering that yet. Right. So we're right. pretty excited and proud to be able to offer these rack rentals right. to you. So uh, the first of these, the, uh, the classes, there's going to be uh, three boot camps to start based on these three topic domains that we talked about. And these are coming uh, within the next few weeks. So at the end of August, uh, we're going to be running the, uh, the Nexus uh, boot camp. It's going to be an online class, uh, basically same exact format as Mark and I are, are running uh, this. We're going to be doing this Nexus class uh, together. Uh, then at the end of uh, September, I'm going to be doing uh, the storage class as, as an online class. At the end of October, Mark is going to be doing the UCS class. Uh, and most likely, we're, we're probably going to be stopping in back and forth to each other's classes and you know, uh, to giving our own individual takes on the, uh, the topics. But the key is that these uh, three, uh, you can attend them live online, or they're going to be available as either downloadable videos or, or streaming videos uh, following the end of the classes. So figure right at the beginning of September, which is coming up pretty soon here, uh, you'll have access to the, the first portion, which is going to be the Nexus class, uh, then the storage and the, uh, the computing.
But the big key point about these classes is that these ones are going to be specifically the CCI level classes. So there's a further division that we're going to be doing that goes beyond just these three to make sure that everyone has the fundamental knowledge of the, uh, the additional topics. And the way that we're doing this is that there's going to be additional video series that we're breaking down into uh, three further parts, which are going to be the, uh, the primer series, the deep dives, and the troubleshooting series. Now what this is going to allow us to do is to uh, take a topic like, let's say, fiber channel. Okay, you need to understand fiber channel before you can understand fiber channel over Ethernet or FCIP. It doesn't make sense to, you know, to, to focus just on that very uh, top portion, maybe 2% of what's going on in just uh, CCIE data center storage before you really understand what storage is. You might be able to configure fiber channel over Ethernet without exactly. knowing fiber channel, right. but should you? Right, because at the end of the day, the reason you're learning this is so you can actually apply this in the real world. Yeah, we want you to pass the exam, but first we want you to be an expert. Exactly, you pass the exactly. Exam. And that's really the key, uh, our philosophy for all of the tracks is that we're not going to prepare you for the exam. We're going to make you an expert engineer. As a byproduct of being an expert engineer, you will pass the exam. But the, the problem is you can't, you can't go it the opposite direction. You can't prepare for the lab and as a byproduct of that learn the technology. You have to first learn the technology, make sure that you have a very solid foundational base and then you can look at how do I actually implement this uh, in the scope of the lab exam, what are like the bad designs that they're going to ask me and then for me to work backwards uh, to solve. I would hate to see someone that looks at the data center lab as a real world design and then actually tries to go to implement that. Uh, because for those of you that have been to like routing and switching lab, security, voice, service provider, it's not real world design. Yeah, that's never been the intent of the IE. It's, right. IE has been how to do it and can we implement it and can we work around right. obstacles. The DE is more about design. Right. And they could probably introduce a CCDE exam for data center. There's enough material whether they exactly. will or not. Don't exactly, know, yeah. Uh, so the, the key of these three series, these are going to be self-paced uh, video series and they're not only going to apply to CCA data center, it's also going to apply to any everyday engineer that just wants to learn these particular topics. Uh, the, the key here is that it's going to be very granular in its delivery. So if you want to learn how virtual port channels work, you can get just the videos on virtual port channels. If you want to learn just how OTV works, you can get those particular uh, videos. If I have a project coming up in six weeks and I have to implement ACE, I want to learn ACE. I don't want to learn you know, storage networking for a CCA data center. So it's, it's going to be a very modular approach that at the end of the day it's going to give now you guys, the end customers, more flexibility as to, to really uh, how, do, how do you solve your individual uh, learning goals of what you're trying to, uh, trying to accomplish here. And we won't just be creating them in a modular fashion, but we'll also be releasing them in a modular exactly. fashion. Exactly. So they'll come to you as we, fit, as we finish one particular topic, right. which will get it out to you much quicker. It just might not be that to begin with every topic is covered, but by the end certainly every topic will be covered. Right. Uh, so specifically with delivery of this, it's going to be uh, towards the end of this year, uh, starting Q3. So we may uh, get some of these, like let's say Nexus to start uh, within the next couple of weeks, starting to, uh, starting to trickle out there. Uh, like if you're an All Access Pass member, you'll, you'll already get access to these. So as the, uh, the videos start to be released, then uh, you'll be able to you know, take them individually. Uh, the next portion is then going to be the, uh, the self-paced labs. So we're going to be subdividing these further as well to make them uh, more modular. Because like I said, you may not be going for CCA data center. You may just want to learn how do I configure virtual port channels and on Nexus on and do a lab on it, exactly. Or how do I configure OTV. Uh, so the labs are going to be broken down into uh, what we would consider primer labs. It's like the basic fundamentals. How do I configure eHRP routing on Nexus? Yeah, I know eHRP, but I don't know Nexus syntax. So I want to, I want to see What's the iOS config? What's the NXOS config? And how do they compare? What are the differences in show commands? What are the differences in debug commands? I know the first time I logged on to a Nexus, however many you know, months ago or right. years ago that was, I couldn't get EIGRP running because I didn't enable the feature. Exactly. It's something as small yeah. as that that you might need to know. Well, you will need to you know. Need to know right. right. Yeah. And these primer labs are going to address those basics. Right. Uh, then the next uh, ones would be the, the deep dive labs, which are going to get more into the you know, advanced designs of like virtual port channels or fabric path or you know, any of the individual topics. Uh, then finally culminating in the, the full scale CCI labs that would simulate like an, uh, your actual eight hour lab exam 
where you have this full overall topology and then you're in charge of, uh, of building this. So not only is it going to be Nexus switching, but it's also going to be uh, computing, it's also going to be storage networking, it's going to be application switching, Nexus virtualization. So a lot of the, uh, the, the individual components is going to be very, very large once you start to build uh, this together. But the key with the labs is just like the video series, it's not only going to apply to you taking the CCI lab exam, it's for any everyday engineer that just wants to learn how the topics uh, work. Because I may be able to read the documentation on what is VPC and look at the syntax, but unless I actually get on the command line and see it working for myself, then I'm not really going to feel comfortable actually implementing that in uh, the real world. By the time you've taken the primer, the deep dive, and the full series labs, you will be taking those CCI level labs. So it will certainly apply to that, but just not only to that. Exactly, exactly. The next portion then is going to be uh, the rack rentals. So just like the, uh, the videos and the, uh, the self-paced labs, these are going to be subdivided further to make the topologies more modular and more uh, flexible. So for example, you'll be able to rent just Nexus 5K and 2K if you want to play around with things like uh, virtual port channels or uh, configuration synchronization between them. Uh, these will be things like the uh, 5548 uh, unified port uh, platform, which again allows you to run LAN and SAN at the same time. So I could have 1 gig E, 10 gig E, 2 gig fiber channel, 4 gig fiber channel, etc., uh, running on the same platform. And then also the, uh, the fabric extenders, the 2232. Uh, which also technically you could pair those with the 7K, so you could do like a 7K and 2K lab or a 5K and 2K lab, uh, so there'll be different uh, variations that we'll have access to. And, and this is for a couple reasons we want to make them modular. One is to limit ADD people so that they can actually focus on the hardware that they want, you know, people like me, to the, you know, to, to the particular platforms that I need to do this smaller lab uh, or this smaller you know, primer or, or deep dive lab, but then also to make it much more cost affordable. We wanted to find exactly. a way exactly. to be able to bring it to you. This hardware, a 7K, is just one. It's not cheap. Right. We have multiple. We're going to have many of these. So in order to be able to bring them to you at a cost affordable, uh, cost affordable uh, level, we wanted to br break them down into much more modular rack rentals as well. Uh, so like Mark was saying, it's not only going to be Nexus 5K, Nexus 2K, uh, Nexus 7K is, is going to be in there as well. Uh, the key with this is that it includes both the M1 modules and the F1 modules. And there is a key difference between them. The M1 modules would be your upstream facing links that go towards the IP network. So these are the ones that allow you to do the layer 3 routing features. So on an M1 module, Without this, you wouldn't be able to do eHRP routing, OSPF routing, BGP, OTV, anything that is a layer three feature, you need this physical card in order to actually do that. Okay, at the same time, with the F1 module, which you could consider this, remember this one is, is related to fabric path for F. Uh, the M1 is like your multi-layer module, that's the layer, the layer three. So you, you really have to have both of these to get the overall view of how does the platform fit into different designs. Where the F1 module is a very high performance, layer two only switching. The M1 module is uh, not as high performance as F1 because it's a feature module. Yeah, it's or you a would much more rich feature. Exactly. Except exactly. For fabric path, which you have to have the F1. We'd have to have the F1 as well. Uh, so and it, that's why Cisco lists both on there. Exactly. Exam. Exactly. And also, these are going to be uh, 10 gig E cards. So as you can imagine, take 10 gig E port. Not cheap. <laughs> right. And we're not going to probably have someone asked a question about the M2 and the F2, the second generation, as well as the Soup 2. We haven't decided on the Soup 2, but the, the, the point is, is that we'll have at least the version 1, which will be able to run uh, most, if not all, the features. Uh, and again, we're trying to bring them to you in a cost affordable way. Right. So at some point down the road, maybe years from now, we might upgrade and add newer cards if newer features require those newer cards. But for now, we can test everything that we want to right. test on the version, the generation one right. cards. And you'll see once we get into the hardware things, and, and this will be like part of the primer class, that if you're going to implement Nexus, you really need to understand what, what is the hardware architecture first. Yes. What are the differences in the modules? What module can run what feature? What module cannot run what feature? Because you don't want to order a Nexus, get it into your data center, and then you realize you can't even use it for your design because you bought the wrong stuff. Uh, so this is part of what we're going to be talking about is uh, the hard hardware architecture, 
what are the differences in, in the modules, and then specifically what features can you run, which features can you not run. Uh, but the way that we have it set up with the Soup ones the 10 gig EF ones and the 10 gig EM ones, you should be able to run every feature that's within the scope of uh, the, the exam, and 99% of the scope of uh, features that anyone would actually be, uh, be deploying. Uh, we'll also have access to the UCS chassis and the Nexus 1000V. Because as we were talking about, the, since the 1000V runs as a virtual machine, you can't do this unless you have a server to actually run it on. And the UCS are perfect. And the UCS, it's already there, so it's, it's the perfect, right perfect platform to run it on. Right. Um, so uh, this could be with the, uh, the B server blade chassis, uh, or it could be with the C servers, uh, the C series, which is like your standalone uh, like 1U, 2U server that, you know, in traditional uh, server design. Uh, so we'll have access to both of those, the UCS Blaze, the UCS Manager, the, uh, the C-Series uh, standalone devices. Uh, also storage for the MDS. Uh, we'll see that there's, there's a number of different designs that you can uh, accomplish with the Nexus hardware. You theoretically could take the MDS out of the design completely if you were to use like the newest specification, like only use FCOE or you know, maybe only use iSCSI or something and just use layer ports. three routing or use the unified ports. ports. Uh, but this does still, uh, it is still an important point of yeah. the vast majority of designs now. And there are still a lot of data centers out there that are running them and they right. all, have not yet collapsed them into the right. unified fabric. So they may still be coming out of the server and converged network adapter in that sense uh, unified fabric, or maybe they're running like the UCS, which actually does take its converged network adapter and run out to the FIs, the fabric interconnects over FCOE, but then presents a fiber channel port up to an MDS or something like this, right. because it's still largely largely deployed, as well as many other SAN switches like right. Brocade and things like that in data centers. Um, it is included in the exam and in terms of the hardware that Cisco put on the blueprint, and it's very important to understand as well. Right. Uh, the syntax is very different. Sy syntax, yeah, syntax is different. Uh, one thing that you'll see that is nice, though, is that uh, the newer versions of MDS do run the code that some of the Nexus does. So the, the core syntax is going to be the same, like the logic of show commands, logic of config T, stuff like that. Um, but since it did come from a different code base, it came from SanOS, when you're, when you're first learning this coming from iOS or coming from Catalyst iOS, there is going to be a learning curve for it. And that's part of what the primer series is going to help with. That, you know, I know EHRP, I know OSPF, I know BGP. I don't need to sit there and listen to you lecture me on BGP for eight hours. Right. Okay, I want to know what's the syntax of BGP on NXOS. How do I uh, configure it? What are the show commands? What are the debug commands? Uh, and that's more what we're going to be focusing on with these uh, primer series that, you know, probably up to this point, you already know a lot of the fundamentals. We just need to know how do we port it to uh, the new syntax. Now, on the flip side, if you don't know BGP, then you have to learn that first. You can't, right. you, know, you can't implement OTV or you can't implement Fabric Path without understanding how layer three routing works, how layer uh, two switching works. So, and actually we forgot to mention that kind of a prerequisite for this. Yeah. You really would have to have at least a CCMP level, a CCMP routing and switching level of knowledge uh, in order to apply any of these uh, topics. Ideally, you would have a CCIE routing and switching level of knowledge. Uh, because then, you know, the layer two switching, the layer three routing, that stuff is going to be secondary. That's going to be easy. Uh, but w as we'll see, you know, well, once we get at least CCMP. a very solid CCMP level of knowledge, I would say. Um, so we're not going to be going into, with these classes, what is OSPF, what is, right. you know, what is spanning tree, that type of stuff. Before we move on with the rack rentals, there was a question about workbooks. And I just want to address this. I addressed it on the chat. But we're simply moving to a much more modular approach and also naming conventions. So in the traditional sense of what INE has released of workbooks, um, you're going to get that in, in our self-paced labs, but they're going to be broken down into very bite-sized chunks, very usable, uh, more modular chunks, such as the primer-based, the deep dive-based, and then the full scale, and then even additionally, the troubleshooting. Right. So it will entail everything that the workbook had. I don't want you to think we don't have these, but we're not going to call it a workbook and just release one. Right. We found that that's, uh, that's an okay method. It's worked well, but having them in a much more modular approach, a much more modular delivery method, 
will not only give you more flexibility to study specifically what you want or need at any given time, but then us the ability to um, release them more modularly, but design them very focused on one technology. And then of course the full scale labs will have everything right. overlaid in a very complex, convoluted, well hopefully not too convoluted, <laughs> Well, it might seem that way, but it's your job to decipher how to do that. And you will have already been through the primer and the deep dive and the troubleshooting, so it won't be convoluted at that point. It will be a full-scale lab. So one way you could think about it, it's it, at the end of the day, it would still be a workbook, but it's we're moving towards more of a model of a technology library right. that you may not be studying for CCI routing and switching, but you may need to implement BGP. Right. Or you may not be studying for CCI security, but you need to implement ASA. So instead of, you know, dropping off a book of 5,000 pages of ASA configs, I want to know how do I do failover. dig through them to exactly, find Exactly, exactly. Right. So going forward, you'll see that the, uh, the, the release method that we're going to be coming out with uh, shortly is going to be more modular. Most likely this is going to start with data center and then kind of bleed back into the other tracks that we have like routing and switching, security, voice service provider, those. Um, but uh, since we get to start fresh with data center, we can do it the right way to start. Right. That it's, right. it's very modular to begin with uh, and it's going to make it uh, our, from our, like Mark said, the release schedule which has always uh, been a sticking point because it's very, very time consuming yes. to produce this content. We think uh, it's going to you know, really make for a much better customer uh, satisfaction level. Right. We think that yeah. you're going to all in all get a better product, get a uh, you know a better release schedule, as Brian said. I, we think that you're you're going to be much more satisfied with this particular approach. Right. Uh, so continuing with, with the rack rentals, so we have uh, Nexus 2K, 5K, 7K, the UCS chassis, which means that uh, Nexus 1000V would be on there. Uh, the uh, the storage platforms, which is going to include the actual. Uh, storage switches, but then also the storage arrays, because without disks, really storage doesn't mean anything. Yeah. Uh, then uh, the uh, application switching with the ACE, uh, so the, the appliance, but then you actually need servers to test this out. So this may be like, you know, a server on the UCS chassis, or maybe this is just a, a standalone virtual machine or a standalone physical machine, but you need some box actually to test the, uh, the end result of this. Right. So as Mark was talking about before, uh, one of the things, let's say like uh, Nexus TrustSec, for example. In the lab exam, they don't say that there's going to be ACS or that there's right. going to be ISE. Right. But from a practical implementation point of view, you can't understand TrustSec unless you figure out how does it actually integrate with the overall uh, design. It's difficult to authenticate radius it's without a radius. Without a radius server, server exactly. <laughs> um, so going along with this more modular approach to the, uh, the labs and to the videos, we are going to be taking pieces of technology that are outside the scope of the exam, but are inside the scope of practical implementation. So if you want to learn TrustSec, you're going to have to learn that within the scope of having an ACS server. Or you know, if I want to learn ACE, I need to make sure that I actually have physical servers in order to actually test uh, the end result of that. So the key here is that um, the way that we're going to be designing the rack rentals is that uh, it's, the topologies are going to be very flexible, where you could rent an individual portion of it. Uh, you will also have the, uh, the availability to rent the, the entire type of topology. Uh, something like indicative of, of this diagram. It will cost more. As to you rent can imagine, though, it will cost more to rent because, at the end of the day, uh, the equipment is very, very expensive for the uh, for these particular platforms. Like in the case of F1 M1 line card, we're talking thirty thousand, forty thousand yeah. dollars a line card. Yeah. Not to take into account the the optics, the fibers, and everything. The fabric, so the fabric modules. The fabric the modules yeah. So so it really starts to add up when you piece these uh, these these platforms together. And that's really the, the key of why we need to make the rack rentals as modular and flexible as possible, because you're not going to need the whole topology until you're at the very very last step of your preparation. So by that time, you should already know how do I configure VPCs, how do I configure OTV. How do I configure the service profiles on the UCS? How do I configure the, uh, the server load balancing config on the, on, on the ACE? So you need to know these things individually before you can piece them together in the, uh, the final overall design. Uh, so uh, the last portion of this then is going to be uh, the, the, uh, the additional live classes.
So uh, as we mentioned, within the next uh, two to three months or so, we're going to be having the, uh, the online Nexus class, the online storage class, and then the online uh, computing class, the so UCS class. That's really the last uh, class. week of each upcoming last month. Last week of each upcoming month, exactly. Exactly. Um, going forward beyond that, we are going to be doing live online and live on-site, so like in our physical classroom here, uh, classes that are specifically on Nexus, so things like uh, Nexus 2K and uh, 5K, uh, Nexus 7K classes, then things on uh, like UCS, how does the Blade Server chassis work, how does the C Server work, how does Nexus 1000V work, how does the UCSM uh, work, because you may not, like I said, be going for CCA Data Center. You may need to know how do I deploy UCS now, because I have a project coming up in two weeks for it. Uh, so uh, making not only the, the self-paced videos modular, but also making the live classes uh, more modular, that's going to give you more flexibility to choose the individual topics that, uh, that, you know, that are uh, relative to you or that are uh, relevant to you. Some of the reasons that people tend to tell us that they want these live on-site, online sometimes certainly as well, right. but you know, online maybe if they can't afford a travel budget or something like that, but on-site because they want uh, hands-on access to the instructor, right. they also want hands-on access to the equipment, yeah. and they want us to maybe even come to whether their city or at least their general geographic right. area. And we haven't exactly nailed down the exact cities yet, but we'll probably be coming to, I would imagine, London, certainly Sun, uh, Seattle, right. some, some of the various you know, uh, east, west coasts, and right. probably over somewhere in Europe that we'll bring yeah. it occasionally as well. Because at the end of the day, everyone has uh, different learning patterns. Some people learn better reading books, some people learn better taking online classes or watching videos or taking live classes. Some people so, have to be sequestered to a live exactly, class to get away exactly, from the life exactly. for a week. So depending on whatever works best for you, we're going to have those different options available. You know, the, uh, like we talked about, live online classes, live on-site classes, recorded videos, self-paced labs, and uh, the rack rentals That's as well, correct. the equipment. Uh, lastly, moving forward beyond this, and outside go ahead. schedule for those classes. The schedule is uh, going to be starting Q1 of uh, 2013. So within the next week or so, those classes are going to start to pop up on the schedule. Uh, then first delivery for them is going to be uh, at right around the first of the year yep, or so, January or so. Uh, so moving forward uh, beyond this, outside the scope of uh, CCIE data center and Cisco data center in uh, general, in the real world, everyone knows there's no such thing as a Cisco only network, a Cisco only data center. There's lots of individual pieces that go into today's networks. And a lot of companies, for the sake of compliance, they're not allowed to buy equipment just from one vendor. That I have to have, you know, servers from Dell, from IBM, from, you know, XYZ vendors because I don't want to put all my eggs in one basket. Okay, the same is true with data centers out there. You're not going to go into a data center and see only this specific design and no other equipment beyond that. Right. Um, so going beyond this from a practical... Plus Cisco uh, doesn't make the discs. Plus Cisco does not make the discs. Yes. Is it? Uh, yes, yes. 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 But they do make the actual racks, the yeah, cages. That's yes. true. They do. Um, so uh, going beyond this, we are going to be moving into additional technology and additional uh, vendor training. Uh, for lots of different uh, topic scopes, for things like uh, VMware, Zen, OpenStack, different types of virtualization from uh, the actual end host point of view, uh, different types of uh, storage implementations like big vendors like EMC, NetApp, uh, also open source uh, solutions like OpenFiler that you could run uh, you know, on the servers that you already have. Uh, then different types of uh, layer two switching and layer three routing vendors like uh, F5, uh, the uh, Brocade Arista switching, uh, Juniper both from a layer two, from a layer three, and from a uh, security point of view. So a lot of these different vendors we're going to be adding into uh, the mix. The key though is that this delivery is not going to be as certification centric as the Cisco training is. Because you may not need to get Juniper certified or VMware certified, but from your day-to-day -day job you may need to know how do I use uh, Juno S or how do I use uh, vSphere or vCenter? Uh, so the key for this is that uh, we're basically going to be building what's a, a multi-vendor technology library that's going to follow along with the same type of structure that we have uh, primer videos, primer labs, equipment that you would be able to get access to, uh, but from a, a larger uh, view of really what's, you know, what someone would need to implement on uh, their day-to-day uh, -day basis.
And we're doing this because we've been asked to do this. Uh, people know the IE name and trust the IE name, and they know that the level of quality that they're going to get from this training, whether certification based or whether just, you know, many people come to us and, and do the training uh, maybe in another platform, maybe they, or another discipline or track. Maybe they did a CCI routing and switching, right. and now they want to know about wireless. They're not even necessarily going for a wireless CCNA exactly, or a yeah. voice CCNP, but they know that they can trust the training, they know that they can trust the quality of delivery, uh, and, you know, so this is why we've, when we've been asked to do this, we're introducing this into our, uh, into our training right, portfolio. Right. Now, what's, what's, what's nice about the Cisco stuff, though, is that their real-world implementation does uh, pretty well follow along with their certification tracks. Right. So if you want to learn Cisco routing and switching and you go through CCNA or CCMP, you inherently will learn right. Cisco routing and switching. Uh, but for some of the other vendors, it's not as clear-cut as that. So, you know, I know layer two, layer three networking, we just placed an order for a thousand Arista switches. I don't need to know what is Ethernet, what is spanning tree, you know, I need to know what is their syntax, how does it differ from, right. you know, what I've done in the past, it's what are the... standard, it's open. Exactly, Everyone exactly. Knows it. right. So that's the key going forward with a lot of these, uh, these new vendors and a lot of the new technologies that uh, in the real world it's it's not the you know very small Cisco view where the the vast majority of the equipment probably is uh, out there uh, the Cisco based and a lot of these you know designs are based on uh, like Cisco designs but there is still a, a large focus of other vendors and interoperability between the uh, the technologies we'd like to thank everyone for coming out today uh, we have a lot of new exciting things going on here at INE going forward and you know we would like to uh, get you involved with that so any questions you have now feel free to uh, to talk to us or any uh, time after class so just send either of us an email if you have any questions about this uh, there is also a section on the uh, the online community that uh, is dedicated now to CCI data center the technical topics and the general discussion so if you have questions on like let's say hardware or anything like that you're better off posting them there so that when we answered everyone from the, uh, the community can benefit from uh, those answers.